Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now, this one is a interesting challenge. I'm gonna try conquer stuff as Zimbabwe without any troops, any troops whatsoever. Or, uh, you know, this is gonna be another economic challenge, similar to Qatar, but this time the goals are slightly different. At least, you know, okay, listen, the goal was initially the same, I just changed it <laughs> as, as it went on, right? But anyways, yes, the goals are slightly different, and we're conquering but without firing a single shot. Now, I'm sure you guys are wondering, what kind of fucking crack is the Iron Spartan on right now? Well, <laughs> it's, it's just, you, you, guys, you guys are gonna have to see, all right? So, of course, I start this out by um, making allies with all of the people around me, because, again, I am not meant to s recruit a single troop in this entire gameplay whatsoever. So, of course, I'm gonna have to keep allies all around me. And I'm gonna want that. So I made friends with Angola and all that and kept them as good friends. And then soon enough, I decided now it's time for the economic development. And uh, I looked around the cities I had. Zimbabwe, I, I, of course, I wanted to develop the capital as I, I norm, that's what I normally develop, right? I normally develop the capital. And so cue me basically spending the next couple of turns just. Sta oh, yeah, and also I finally actually touched the economic points for once. And. I just went in all in on the, all in on the econ economy part of that. <laughs> I mean, of course, it's, it's an economical challenge, so it has to be that way. Anyways, cue me basically just spending the next couple of turns pretty much just investing in my economy over and over again. After a couple of turns, I decided that I could speed this up by increasing my research. And uh, I increased my research to the point where that I wasn't losing money but I was like, you know, making very little. And through this, I was actually able to, you know, increase my uh, research points, right, interestingly. And I used those to f finally finish the economic growth, 25, 25, and then use the rest for income production. And I basically just do this because right now I realized that Zimbabwe was pretty low tech, right, pretty low in the techno technological sector. And so I decided to just basically put my money into the techno uh, technology. And, you know, for the next couple of turns, I did this. And soon enough, the results paid. If you look at that graph, you just pause the screen right there. Look at the graph. Pause the screen, look at the graph. Mm, it is it is looking good. The upward trend with that technology, man. It is looking good. So that's mainly what I did. Um, I, just, I just looked at it. You know, I was climbing pretty fast, mainly because I was dedicating so much of my economy to research, right? And... Um, I think after a while, I mean, no, I mainly just kept doing this. So it was mainly just a research grind from here. At last, it was over. Soon the time came to turn the research off and boom, I was making, I think, way more, or at least a, a very noticeable increase in my uh, economy thanks to the researching. And also, I then started decided that I should probably invest in the building and infrastructure around my country. And so I focused on that instead. And um, I started building farms in the capital. And I was almost about to build an army, but then I remembered no troops. What is the army going to do in like a zero troop country, right? So I spent the next couple of turns just going around building infrastructure primarily around my country. Later, I noticed that Madagascar was at war with uh, Mozambique. And I remembered what happened last time. I got, I got, I basically got flashbacks to what happened last time when I was trying this challenge as Qatar. And I decided everyone in the world must join together to completely destroy Madagascar before they could ever, ever raise, rise to that level of dominance that they did last time. So I got India, China, um, hell, I even I think I even got Saudi Arabia. Yeah, Saudi Arabia, Australia, South Africa. I just got all of them, all of them to invade Madagascar, destroy the country while it was weak, so that so that I was no listen. I was essentially eliminating a future economic rival, because I mean listen, you guys saw you guys saw what happened, you saw what happened to Madagascar. What happened with Madagascar last time, right? They ended up becoming basically the only country that I couldn't beat. So, yeah, I pretty much did that. Later, I would increase my research once again because I realized that, you know, that whole development score in the bottom of the thing, or like, you know, it shows that upward arrow, it wasn't really going to go any further up. And so I decided to spend some money researching. Now, if you'll notice on the top, 
the Democratic Republic of Congo is currently invading Angola right now as we speak. And uh, you guys will see how that becomes important a little bit later. Because soon I realized that the Democratic Republic of the Congo had defeated Angola. And Angola was now a shell of a nation. And I realized that the DRC could rise to become a threat. An economic threat in the future. I mean, that's really what this is all about. So I got all the smaller nations to ga basically gang up on uh, the DRC. I got Cameroon. I got Uganda. I got the Republic of the Congo. No, one of, no single one of them was meant to take more territory than the other. But they were all meant to take territory so that the Democratic Republic and the Congo would be divided. I even got Burundi, which was recently at war with Rwanda, to join the war. And then this ended up with the countries all splitting it. Basically, the Republic of Congo and Cameroon splitting Congo up, right? And now, Cameroon, Republic of Congo is pretty powerful. So what I did next was I quickly got, uh, I looked around at who is strong, right? I got Nigeria, I think, you know, I looked around, right? I made sure I was uh, checking out all the people, how much they were. And I realized I don't want these guys getting stronger again either. And so I got Gabon. I got Angola first, first Angola. I got Angola to declare war on the uh, Cameroon and then Gabon to declare war from the other side. And so now, boom, Cameroon was further split apart. Gabon was strong, Angola was strong. But none were strong enough to threaten me. And that was the point. And then once they released the Republic of Congo, they were all weak. That, that is the idea. That is the idea there, you know? And so then what I did was I got Nigeria to declare war on Cameroon. And then I got Sudan to go to war with Cameroon as well. And so now, two, being in a two-front war, Cameroon would be split up. Split up and divided amongst uh, the two powers. And Sudan actually ended up getting quite a lot out of that deal because they took a lot of the southern territories of Cameroon. And now Cameroon was split up. Nigeria was strong. But um, alas, I couldn't really do anything about Nigeria because Algeria was right there. They were pretty strong too. And um, honestly, I, you know what? In hindsight, I should have probably got all the nations around them to invade. But whatever. Next, next tar My next target for this diplomatic meddling was the USA. <laughs> And so I, okay, you did like, you know, causing the USA to basically collapse and on, like collapse is pretty easy because you can just, all you have to do is get Canada and Mexico to declare war. The two front war usually kills the USA pretty easily, right? The war on two fronts will, and like, keep in mind, Canada and Mexico are pretty powerful in of themselves, eh, like themselves. So the two front war typically destroys America. Um, but then the U.S. did manage to invade Mexico from the south, surprisingly. So, yeah. Meanwhile, Zimbabwe, on the other hand, was having a technological revolution just simply because I was spending all this time investing in my research. And so I decided that maybe now is the time to put it back in the economy and go right back to the economical grind. After a while, though, I started realizing that Simply putting all of my factories in Harare wasn't a good idea because at some point, I, I think I experienced this with Qatar as well. At some point, even if you put more and more factories into a single city, you won't make more money. And so that ends up being a problem because, you know, what's the point in investing in the city constantly if you don't make more money, right? But if you invest in other cities, you will make like there, there's a sharper increase in how much you make. And what I did, what I started doing was instead of just putting all of it in Harare, I started investing in the other cities around, like, you know, in Zimbabwe, which if you look to the top screen, right, as I do this investments, as I do these investments, you see a drastic increase in the amount of money I'm making. And so I realized that this tactic would actually serve me better. And so this was what I did for the next turns to come. In addition to that, I remembered that I spent a long time researching, by the way, and that unlocked the new upgrades for the buildings that I could make. And so I took this opportunity to basically just start, you know, upgrading the stuff that I'd left behind. And soon, I mean, eventually, at least after a couple turns, all of Zimbabwe had pretty much the max the amount of facilities that uh, any province could have at my technological level. Now, much later on in the game, I'd look over at the um, 
different rankings and civilizations. And holy shit, China is absolutely up there. And we are nowhere near them. So I decided to deal with this economic rivalry, you know. You know I, can't, I can't have another economy beat me. And so I get Vietnam to invade. I get Japan to join in. And I basically get the nations surrounding China to gang up on them. But I realize it's, Vietnam is not enough. And so I get Myanmar and Laos to invade from there. I also get Kazakhstan to invade from the west. And I even get Mongolia to join in uh, on the invasions. And so now, and even Hong Kong and Macau, I just I just get them to declare war. Again, I don't even have to pay them for this. It's just the AI. And so China starts facing attack from literally every single angle. And basically they start collapsing. And the best part about this is that there's so many people invading them that no one nation gets it all. Um, you know, I also, I kind of expected a Japanese naval invasion, but it never really happened. And I even got the Philippines to try join in, but like I thought about it and just, I don't know, it didn't work. And then I even noticed that like Afghanistan was still open. And so I just got Turkmenistan to invade them to further like take more, you know, split up the territory and whatnot. And like soon enough, China was just collapsing and um, collapsing from within, really. And uh, they, they were just getting absolutely ganged up on. And uh, yeah, that basically dealt with the rival. I mean, that, you know, with, with a play, like, with, with shit like that happening, I mean, you can't stay in the top spot. That's, that's for Zimbabwe. That, that, you know. Oh, and if you guys wonder what was going on elsewhere in the world, well, uh, the Middle East was fucked up as you know i mean turkey mainly but just fucked up as usual uh there were rebellions rebels against saudi arabia cyprus was united lebanon was there saudi arabia was mainly fighting like i don't know all of turkey including and also france libya had seized the west turkish coast romania had conquered greece per usual bulgaria is forming a slavic empire egypt was in montenegro for some reason and france was out here basically just being napoleon Macron became Napoleon, basically. Uh, Portugal was just chilling, I guess. And, um, you yeah, know, all these guys are just around here. Just, I don't know. They were going nuts. And Saudi Arabia was out here basically trying to form the Middle East Empire like we did last time. And also, if you ever wonder what happened, ever became a Madagascar, they got invaded by Australia. And which ensures that they will never challenge me economically like they so painfully did last time. Now it was time for me to put my plan into action. I'm sure you all wondered how I'd conquer people without a single troop. Well, that would come to fruition. Oh, see, you see, not in any sort of, it's not a conventional way of conquering, but it is an interesting method. So what I decided to first experiment this on was Sudan and South Sudan. I got Sudan to invade South Sudan, right? Four provinces would be easy for them. So South Sudan, for some reason, just went on an offensive, but it was quickly crushed. And then I decided to do a trade deal with Sudan and basically bought, tried to buy two provinces and paid 100000 handsomely for it. They didn't accept initially, but I was like, Ayo, hey, you know what? How about I cut you a better deal? One province for 470000 and it worked. And it worked, ladies and gentlemen. I was able to literally buy territory. And soon I realized, all right, it's going to have to come now. So next province I saw, I went and I came. <clears throat> Wait, no, okay, I, I made the map get messed up. But next province, I went to the Sudanese trade request and took, selected the province, basically. Uh, yeah, I just want to make sure which province it was. And then I selected the province. And then once again, put all my money in this time. I wanted to make sure these deals went through. And once again, they did. Guys, let, me, let this sink in. I was literally buying territory, right? And I realized <clears throat> that I need to buy it before they set up cores. And the way, they, the way you set up cores in this game is, you know, assimilate. It comes with assimilation, right? When a significant part of your territory is your, uh, has your people. And so the thing is, the trick is that you have to uh, like uh, buy the province before the enemy country or not enemy here. They're not enemies. They're my business partners. What am I saying? But 
before the other country can get cores on it or else if they get cores they will never sell it because no country would be willing to sell a core part of their territory but yes gentlemen this is how this is how i just expanded into four new provinces without a single soldier my strategic purchasing would con continue elsewhere i got botswana to go attack namibia and I used this invasion, right, as Namibia was weak. I knew they'd lose. And um, Bots I, Botswana was able to take over the entire country and annex it all. Or actually, halfway. But I knew this. I would use this invasion. I could use this invasion as an opportunity to take as much territory as I could. And so, I took the first bit, 60,000. And, of course, Botswana accepted. And soon, I was taking another pro another province. About 70,000 this time. Another problem. They sold again. Again, as you guys can see, I'm an expert negotiator. You know? Um, each province, my standard pricing was about 60,000 to 70,000 for every province. And you know what? I should probably do a video in the future just like, you know, checking out how much exactly it is. It costs for a province, you know, in this game. You know, I should probably like make a video to define the price ranges so that, you know, I don't know, you guys could try it so that you guys could mainly try this out yourselves as well, if you ever wanted to. And so just like that, with the insane amount of money that I'd piled up, I literally bought half of Namibian territory that, that they previously controlled. I decided to try a similar thing with Libya. And so I got Egypt to invade them in North Africa. Now this invasion went, I mean, pretty successfully as you'd expect. Two provinces. But, oh yeah, and the Egyptians just decided to massacre the shit out of one of them. And that's why they had a little stop there. But, see, there was a slight problem. That was in all of Libya. And it took me a while to figure this out. I was wondering, where the hell is the rest of Libya, right? And then it took me a moment, trust me, I was, I don't know, I was looking in the wrong places until I almost, yeah, I looked at West Africa, I, I couldn't tell where Libya was, right? But then I looked up and I realized, oh, it's this Turkish territory. And so I got France to invade them. But since France was at war with someone else, they did something else. And then finally, the main challenge to my power came with the Democratic Republic of the Congo being the first nation to actually attack me. And here's the thing. Part of the rules of this game was that I could not recruit anybody. And so that's what, that's that's how it had to be. I, I just had to stay, keep away from recruiting anyone, even though I had 500,000. Meanwhile, the plan to kind of like, you know, destroy the Lib Libya so that I could like take over their provinces was kind of like hitting its own little, having its own issues, you know? Because I tried to get more and more people to, to invade and take them over. Egypt had landed in troops in Turkey, but Egypt was more interested in like pillaging the land than actually taking it over, which is, I swear, it's like the most annoying part of the, about the AI. But yeah, that was going on. I was trying to like get this to work uh, because I kept trying to like, you know, make it... Uh, Make it function. Took me a while. I kept waiting for Egypt to like eventually, you know, break out and all that. And of course, I re um, took these territories. And I realized that, oh, wait, Abyssinia had just invaded uh, Congo. And so I decided to take this opportunity to just try to annex it all. And I even put literally like 300,000 in this. Didn't work. So I decided to just negotiate for the provinces one by one and guys that's that's what i learned in this game uh negotiating for provinces separately isn't the best the best way to do it you know uh negotiating for them one by one is typically a better strategy <laughs> so i basically one by one again i had the money to do this so one by one for about seventy thousand, i bought carefully bought each and every i mean of course i tried to do two trade requests at the same time wasn't possible, only one province, but still, whatever, doesn't matter, right? I took took one more province over and over again, you know, I was essentially 
taking everything that they just had, had just conquered. And like, hey, listen, I make this sound like I'm conning Ethiopia or you know, Abyssinia, whatever. But let's be real. The AI is getting rich as fuck out of me. <laughs> so later I came across this five-star province, right? And I realized that it won't be such an easy buy, but I had to increase the price slightly for them to make me take it. Now this one was seven stars, so I increased to 100,000, and that actually made the AI accept it. So again, that's what, the prices differ based on the, like, you know, the province value, right? Prices differ based on that. And this one last province wasn't being sold to me for some reason. I tried more pro higher price and it finally worked. So just like that, I'd basically, <laughs> Not I, I just basically bought the Democratic Republic of the Congo. And they were still at war with me, but I made peace with them. I didn't care. I didn't bother with the rest of their territory. So now I'd increase my provinces, but then Libya was still, had still not been taken, which was absolutely infuriating. I got Algeria to invade them because I was so sick of it. And then, then I think France ends up invading them. Like they just come back out of nowhere. And then finally they do it. And then I start buying from France. And so then I start immediately with first try, but it doesn't work. I wonder what's wrong, but I try, okay, I try spending a little bit more money. This time it works. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> of course I spend a couple, like you know, a couple thousand just you know, increasing my stability. And over here, Egypt was facing a rebellion right then and there. I mean, you know, I, I can't even, I'm not even surprised, like considering how much they, you know, massacred the, the, the state. But uh, I tried buying from Egypt. It didn't work, unfortunately. And uh, I tried once again buying from France, you know, the west coast of Turkey, which is mainly what I wanted which was successful this time. I had to, like, I realized I had to seemingly pay more for France, right? But the, the thing is, um, it was, how do I put this? Uh, like, you know, <clears throat> uh, what do I call it? it? The provinces were worth more, right? Pretty much. The province value in like West Turkey is pretty high. So in that sense, it makes sense, right? Afterwards, I once again raised enough money for a French territory that was taken, had been taken up. And so I tried to trade with Libya. I just realized that was pretty stupid. Um, and, then, and then I once again switched to France. And so I, uh, I traded the province. And like this time I went a little bit over. Made, I made sure that they'd buy it. But now I had basically bought West Turkey. Then, all of a sudden, Namibia declares war on me, right? Then remember, the country that I bought half of it from. And uh, this concerned me, but I was like, okay, I'll deal with this like I dealt with the past few wars. And I got South Africa, which was nearby. Um, well, actually, no, I got Angola. for No, South Africa, then Angola as well, uh, to both declare war at the same time, simultaneously on Namibia. And so now Namibia was completely surrounded by enemies. And so this didn't concern me though. Again, I, I was being invaded, but it was, it was fine. The problem would take care of itself. And then they somehow managed to reach actual Zimbabwe. And that like, you know, concerned me, but whatever. Meanwhile, over on the other side of things, I tried to buy the Libyan provinces from Egypt. And initially they were being, uh, they, they were they were making a hard bargain for me, but I raised the price and that worked and I decided to just, you know, increase the price even more and uh, it worked in the other, no, it, it, this one was also a hard bargain, right? But this was harder because it was six, like the province value was six instead of just three or four, right? And so I tried to once again, like offer and I offered everything that I had. Right, all the money. I was. I really wanted this province because you know it would be a nice addition. Uh, but Egypt was almost done with its assimilation attempts, and so I was. That happened, right? And then I realized, okay, um, Namibia is dead, 
And so I'd have to, maybe I could try take their capital from South Africa and I tried to buy it. This one didn't work. And then I realized that, okay, I'll focus on Namibia now because that that province in Egypt that Egypt held, it would be assimilated in a matter of turns. And so it wouldn't happen. Anyways, I basically started buying up from Angola, uh, which is, I mean, it was relatively easier because the provinces were uh, cheaper, I guess. And South Africa, I knew it would take some time because they wouldn't be able to assimilate it. So, I, But I tried again regardless and it didn't work. And uh, so I decided to just wait. Just wait for a couple turns, wait till I had enough money. And I waited till 300,000 before deciding to buy it. And um, I tried to, I, and I also thought about it and like I tried to buy the whole city, right? And this time it worked. So keep in mind, just like that, 300,000 coins had just been transferred from me to South Africa. Please, let me tell you, when the, when I say the AI was getting fucking rich off of my trade deals, I mean it. Okay? Later I realized, okay, Sudan is in a war and it's distracted. I could get this small breakaway state, which it obviously rebelled away from a country, to try it, but it didn't work. And then I realized, okay, then I could just buy away the breakaway state because Sudan didn't have cores on it. And so... I uh, just made sure my pricing was good and I bought it. So now I had a territory on the Indian Ocean, like the coastline. And then I noticed Yemen was invading Djibouti right there. And so I was like, hey, you know what? Let me buy this stuff. And um, I decided to start with like the Eritrean part of it, right? And the deals, but then I decided, okay, fine, go for the main city. Didn't work. And now that I think about it in hindsight, maybe I could have waited for a while, maybe, you know, gone for the city. But I decided that it might be, it would be, it would be better off for me to just go after the, um, like, Eritrean territories instead. But later, I initially tried one last time with 300,000. It didn't work. I kept trying again and again and again. I mean, perhaps if I waited to 400,000, it might have worked. Who knows? But... I decided that, okay, it's not worth all the tr this trouble just for one city. Might as well just buy the other ones. And so one by one, I started buying off the other provinces. And again, I was, <laughs> I started looking at the, but yes, I started buying up the provinces up one by one until I eventually reached the former Eritrean borders, right? And, um, and so now I, I had just assimilated all of that. <laughs> And uh, then I realized, okay, Yemen had all this. This one was a core, the, the territory they got from Somalia. But the ter territory they got from Djibouti still remained. And so I tried to raise enough money. I realized I still had 20-something turns, right? Now, in hindsight, again, in hindsight, everything's in hindsight, but still. In hindsight, I could have disrupted this process by getting a neighboring nation to invade them, maybe Sudan. But then that would prevent me from buying it. So again, it's a, there's a flip side to everything, right? And so I spent more money and I got this, this province next to it. And of course, I gave up on getting the main, you know, capital of Djibouti, right? I forgot the name, but... I f or actually just Djibouti, right? I, I gave up on getting that province because I realized it's, um, it was a level 7 in value. And uh, it was it would be relatively pretty difficult for me to get it, and soon enough, uh, I tried one last ditch attempt to get it, but alas, that failed. And soon enough, I mean, one one last ditch attempt, right? At three hundred sixty thousand, they didn't sell, and finally, Yemen got course. So, there ended that buying spree. Now later, I decided to pay tribute, I guess, in a way to an old video of mine, you know? I'm sure you guys recognize what's going on. But I basically got Saudi Arabia to declare war on Qatar. And this war went about as well as you'd expect. And Saudi Arabia basically just took them over. And um, soon enough, they were taken into Saudi Arabia and conquered. Now at this point, I had stacked enough money to get a million. And I also noticed that Saudis took over Oman. And so I decided, hey, you know what? Might as well get that too. And so I started buying up provinces 
that Oman had. And, um, well, I guess, you know, you could say the Saudis were happy to sell it to me because, I mean, let's be real. <laughs> Do you see how ludicrous these trade deals are, bro? Um, and, like, of course, I had to pay a little bit higher for the four-star provinces that came. But basically, I went on a spending spree right here. And um, province after province... <laughs> I mean, listen, I hadn't just stacked up like a million coins for nothing. Let's be real, right? I looked at the provinces with didn't, that had less stability and I was like, okay, those are what I'm going for. And um, I bought more and more of them. And I also noticed that Qatar was here, but Qatar was still being occupied. And so I couldn't buy it, right? I tried. I, I put a bunch of money into it, but no, I couldn't buy it because it was occupied. So that whole thing just failed, right? Then when they did annex it, I put I put like 300,000 to this one. And since it was a, uh, since even then they still didn't let it go. And the main reason I wanted to get Qatar so badly was mainly because it had like 25,000 factories, which would be pretty great addition. Now I should have probably gotten the other island too, but Last, I, just, I was happy with what I got here. After a while, I noticed that France was getting a tad bit too powerful. Even though they were at war with Romania, they were still absolutely massive. So was Ukraine and Russia. So I decided that, okay, it's time to cause some instability. And so I basically got all these nations to start fighting each other. And I ensured that every single one of them would have at least two opponents. And in this way, they all started going nuts. Like, literally all of Europe started basically just blowing up. And France wasn't being necessarily touched that much, but it was still, I'm sure it would affect their economy. Meanwhile, in Southeast Asia, Laos was still at war with China. Most of them had pieced out and taken their own slices of China themselves. Meanwhile, Bangladesh was out here taking over India by storm. But I decided I couldn't let that happen, so I got Myanmar to jump them from behind, basically. I got Bhutan to join in as well in the jumping of... I don't know, jumping them. And then, um, and I even got Russia, which, you know, had a territory here, but uh, I, I just got them to even straight up attack Bangladesh just like that. And so now Bangladesh have, was having their empire basically just lost right there. And India gained it back. And, you know, one thing was that I was a little concerned I was making India powerful now. But then I was like, nah, they don't have the same like factories. Right. And I thought I looked over at different countries. I looked over at Kuwait and I was like, hmm, they're there too. But for now, this is going to be it. Oh, yeah. Post game, I looked around and I noticed Mexico had conquered like a part of Haiti and which they didn't control. And so I decided, hey, you know what? Might as well have like a nice little Caribbean, Caribbean, sorry, Caribbean um, getaway. You know what I'm saying? And so I, I thought I'd just like buy off these territories from Mexico, which was <laughs> successful for me. And, um, you know, I basically bought like half of, just straight up just bought half of Haiti. And then I realized there are more places that didn't have cores. And so I bought um, Cockburn Town as well, which is one star, pretty easy. And then I also looked at the Bahamas and noticed that they weren't a core, but Thing was, I mean, no, I, yeah, I decided to just buy them, these islands too. Like, uh, I think, but then I realized, yeah, they were uh, being just occupied. And so I couldn't buy them, unfortunately. And so, you know, I looked at the wars, nothing was really going on. And I tried to look for more places that I could buy from. And that led me to the ruined United States, which had a couple of breakaway regions, I assume, from the years of war with Mexico. And the U.S. was just left as a rump state, though. And then I realized, okay, maybe I could just, you know, poach these towns, too. So I got Kansas to go to war with the Pawnee tribe, I guess. Took it over pretty quickly. And I decided, eh, you know what, I'll buy the province. And I had the enough money, so I just spent about, like, a, a little bit. I didn't even have to spend that much. I spent 30000 because it was a one-star province, so it didn't really require much. Afterwards, I got the U.S. itself to invade the uh, state of Kansas. And, um, well, you can imagine that invasion just 
went as well as you'd think. Very well. And then I decided, eh, you know what, I'll just, I'll just, uh, one by one, I decided to buy the provinces. And again, I bought them for cheap because these provinces were literally nothing. And uh, thing was, initially, they actually, Trump rejected my deals. Of course, it's Trump. He's a, he's a very, he's a big businessman, you know, a very, very, very big businessman. He, I just, he, he just sold a state, basically. Okay, I'm not, I'm not going to do, do the impersonation on my voice is gone um but i kept trying to make <laughs> trade deals but then i realized that america had cores on this territory like i don't know what why it didn't occur to me but america had cores this was literally american territory from the beginning of the game <laughs> which is so that was kind of stupid of me i should have probably gone mexico to attack but yeah anyways i decided to just you know cause some more instability this time for Mexico, by getting both Canada and the USA to go to war with them. The US initially refused, but I was like, come on, bro, you got this. And then they went, you know, um, I'm a great negotiator. This, the AI is great at negotiating things. But uh, yeah, no, that war would make keep, keep Mexico occupied for a long time. After that, I uh, tried to look at different places that I could possibly buy in Latin America. But uh, unfortunately, I couldn't really find much, you know. I searched, but I really could not. Meanwhile, my instability was seemingly paying off. Russia was stuck in a perpetual war with France. And while their war hadn't really claimed that much lives, France versus Romania did. I'll tell you that. France versus Romania surely claimed a lot of lives, which was good. I mean, that was the intention. Meanwhile, India was still at war, so that worked. Saudi Arabia was at war with, like, so many of its northern neighbors, it's insane. Uh, and uh, meanwhile, Russia was just here. Azerbaijan was, you know, going crazy. Uh, meanwhile, Malta had somehow managed to seize a ginormous chunk of Turkey. And they were at war with Bulgaria. And so I was like, you know what, let's make this faster. And so I got Egypt to declare war on Bulgaria, but Bulgaria takes them over. <laughs> And so, yeah, that happens. So I'm like, I got to take these guys out. And so I get Romania to declare war on them. I'm like, okay, these guys got to go. And then that invasion fails and Bulgaria ends up still surviving. But then they get taken over by Malta anyways. So all that was useless. And then I decide, hey, you know what? I'll just buy it all. Screw this. And like, I bought it from Malta for like 400,000. And they actually accepted I don't know, man. I find that insane. But yeah, they actually accepted for all that territory. And then I got ambitious and I was like, okay, let, how about we take all of this Turkish territory for everything that I currently have in my coffers? But Malta was a little bit more hesitant on this one, I guess. I don't blame them. I wouldn't just sell away a massive conquest like this. But I was determined. And so... I once again went to Malta and I just decided to buy province by province slowly. And the deals actually went well as I expected. I started getting province after province. Um, the next province went as just as well. I got Trabzon. Tra Trabzon? Yeah. I, bas I started buying along the Black Sea coast initially, you know. And that's where the, the best properties are, right? And then got this one, obviously. Uh, I, like, so, yeah, I continued all along the ba Baltic. What's that, Baltic? No, Black Sea coast. And I even went inland, actually, because I realized, hey, this is a pretty cheap province, and so it'll be pretty easy for me to take. Uh, meanwhile, I, I knew I was on a ticking climb, time clock, too, because uh, they were assimilating the provinces. But at the same time, it wouldn't really be much of a problem, considering they had about 40 turns to do this so, do so, so... Um, I, they would be taking long anyways. And so I gradually just bought up literally everything that Malta had conquered in Turkey. <laughs> gradually. Gradually, slowly but surely, I just... Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna just let y'all watch this because <laughs> you'll see this part. But yes, I took another province and then now all they were left with was the inland ones. And now this, this, in this inland one, I tried to buy it, right? It was uh, three points. They didn't sell. So I was like, okay, this is going to be tough, but uh, let's try this again. And I tried a different province. 
This one I tried for 78,000. They also didn't sell. So they kind of just suddenly stopped selling provinces and it was weird. I had about I had a decent amount of money. I increased the prices, didn't work. And the weird thing was that they didn't even have cores on the territory. Right? They just they just held it. They didn't really uh, have many people. They were still assimilating, mind you. I tried 100,000, it didn't work. Normally, right, three star bronzes, they take like a little bit less, but I tried even higher, right? I tried 120,000, it didn't work. And so then I was like, okay, these provinces are not worth the trouble. They genuinely aren't. They have each have like 3,000 and 6,000, okay? Maybe the 6,000 one would be good, kinda, because just for more territory, but no. There's not really a point to that. So I just, I was like, okay, I'm done doing business with, I'm, 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 I'm done doing business with Malta. I'm just gonna leave it. And shortly after that, a similar thing ended up happening with Georgia, where um, <clears throat> I tried to buy their provinces, right? I was like, hey, you know what? All three for 200,000, come on. But no, it didn't work this time. And like, I think it's mainly because the provinces were a little bit higher value. But, um, they just I tried I tried the six star one right and I gave them like a hundred fifty thousand that should have been enough, but no it didn't work. I tried for the four star one, right? Uh, I tried about a hundred no I tried eighty thousand for that didn't work. Normally eighty thousand would be enough and I tried another hundred sixty thousand didn't work. It's just it was just that Georgia just didn't want to sell for some reason and I I still wasn't sure why, but then I realized that okay. They don't have cores, but they do have a majority population. So that is probably why they don't want to sell. And so I was just like, ah, okay. That's it. That's, that's just an issue then. Meanwhile, I noticed that France had just completed its war with Romania. Now, of course, aside from the fact that this was concerning to me because of the fact that Romania was meant to weaken France, not strengthen it, that also opened up an opportunity. I realized that now France was in control of a lot of territory that wasn't cored. And so I immediately went for Athens. I was like, okay, we're spending money for this. And I did, and I got it. <laughs> Seven star city, just like that. France was willing to sell it. It was pretty good. And like later, I, you know, guys, I'm like looking at from the end of this video, right? Uh, it's not the end, but still. France, I think, by far got got the most money from me, and you'll see why. Uh, also, Zambia uh, asked for an alliance. I was just like, you know what? I don't get into these things. I'm not gonna do that. But yes, I continued to buy another yet another province from France, and another, uh, and I continued on upward, essentially upward through the Greek Peninsula. You know, I mean, consider this my quote unquote advance. I was I was advancing through the provinces, conquering them one by one, just like you know, throwing money at their face. That's how that's how I conquered them, guys. Um, I went over to the next province nearby, and uh, this time as well, I spent about eighty thousand, seventy thousand for this, seventy eighty thousand. That's how much I spend on average. And afterwards, I decided to try connect my territories. I want I really wanted to. But unfortunately, it, I didn't think the AI would let me. I tried to take the Macedonian capital of Skiop... Skop... I don't know how to pronounce it. But I tried again with um, more, like about 100,000 people. Didn't work. It was a five-star city, honestly. I didn't really want to spend too much. And in hindsight, again, I think I could make it if I had spent more. But... Alas, I decided to save my money for other uh, provinces that I could take, which I did right shortly afterwards, but uh, that also, I mean, the other province still was pretty successful. Yet there was still so much of Romania that I could buy up, or the ex-Romanian empire that I could buy up, which is insane, honestly. Um, Libya was still here somehow, I guess they had rebelled, and I decided, hey, you know what? just get uh, Algeria to declare war on them later. <clears throat> Meanwhile, I was still trying to buy territories from France. They had already cored their territories in um, Turkey, so I couldn't get any of those. But they hadn't cored this one territory. 
And I kept trying to look for territories which, you know, I could take that weren't cord and that weren't, wouldn't just be like, you know, some just some territory. Because I wanted to spend my money carefully because I was at uh, 160000 now 94000 right, even less. And so I decided that uh, I just spend all my money right here, two provinces on the Black Sea coast. And just like that, I had taken a whole bunch of territory from France. Just bought it all. And also, I went back to ensuring that France was in a continuous perpetual war by getting the Netherlands to declare war on them as well. Uh, that, that, along with the Russians, would basically, I ensured that they would keep them occupied for the foreseeable future, you know. And I even got Switzerland to join in, <laughs> astonishingly enough. But they, Switzerland, actually, no, I just realized, Switzerland was completely pushed off of their actual territory, which, I don't know, it's kind of weird, but yeah. Anyways, I even looked at Ukraine and I noticed I could take this province right here, Constanta, but then I was like, hmm, nah. I, was, I just thought about it, but then uh, I decided that maybe it wouldn't be the best of ideas to just buy, for, buy that one province for nothing. And I looked around, I saw Indonesia was here, and then I was like, oh, they don't need this territory, I can just totally buy the coast of Croatia, but... They'd already court it. I didn't realize until I looked down and uh, noticed that they had cores. After that, I returned to France and once again just bought a piece of Bulgaria from them because uh, I was just like, eh, I was in the market for this. And I had to spend all the money that I had in the coffers right then and there, uh, which got me the province. And as I was sitting there thinking, oh, I wouldn't get much more, all of a sudden a rebellion just pops up. And this rebellion is actually pretty successful, which actually impressed me with how fast it was able to just take over all the, literally all the French territory in the Balkans. <laughs> Meanwhile, I was suddenly ganged up on by like four nations, all of whom I'd strangely like, you know, it was past, but all of them I'd screwed over, except Chile. I don't know what Chile was doing there, but... Madagascar declared war, Congo declared war, and South Sudan declared war. Interestingly, they were all nations that I screwed over in the past. And I got Mozambique and Australia to declare war on Mo uh, Madagascar for me to, you know, finally finish off Madagascar, you know, take, take like a little, 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 little revenge for what they did last time, you know. I mean, look, they didn't really do anything wrong last time. They just sort of, they were just, I, I'm just mad because, mad because bad. You know, they just did better, right? But uh, the Democratic Republic of Congo, they were disconnected, but I got ta Tanzania to basically just invade them for me. And of course, I told them to do that so that I could buy them later. But yeah, we're going to see that. Ah, yes, the Congo is dead. Time to buy their provinces with the money I've been earning. Ha, <sighs> it, was, it was pretty easy. Tanzania was, I mean, okay, listen, Tanzania was probably more than happy to just sell the provinces to me. Uh, it, was, it was pretty good prices, let's be real. And so I assimilated them. Meanwhile, over in Madagascar, they had also been conquered. And so I was like, eh, you know what, there's no more Madagascar, make peace. And then I could easily just, I decided to go to Australia instead. And, well, not instead, just, you know, go to them. And I just bought these provinces for good prices. The Australians were happy to sell them to me because, of course, they were, like, making copious amounts of money, guys. I'm, I'm just saying, every single nation that I bought from just makes a fucking truckload of money. It's absolutely insane. It's ludicrous. Right? And, of course, I made peace with the nations. I don't know what Mongolia had to do with me, but it was, it was weird. But, yeah. Meanwhile, <coughs> South Sudan had peaced out, but... They were a vassal of Ethiopia now, so I just peaced out. I'm like, okay, let that end. And, um, you know, I was, I was thinking about it, but then, I mean, yeah, no, I just left them alone after that, right? And so, yeah, uh, that happened. Back to buying Madagascar, though, I noticed that there were still, you know, there were still provinces that I need to get, you know, business that needed to be done, you know what I'm saying? And um, I took the province, and I just paid, like, another 120,000 something. But this time the Australians strangely rejected it and I wasn't sure why. But I decided to once again try 
and uh, this time putting even more money, right? And they still didn't accept, which was weird. But I w decided to try again, uh, this time a different province, and uh, this time they ex actually accepted it. So I was pretty happy with that. And um, I once again started raising more money. I knew I had the time. Time was on my side. I just wanted to make sure, you know, get the deal set in. And I spent all my money I had, didn't work. So I just like, okay, okay, hold up, hold up. Try again. And uh, this time it worked. And that's how you do it, folks. No soldiers whatsoever.